Hi, I'm Shane with eTutor.com. Today you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to walk you through the installation on the draw tight class one sport frame trailer hitch receiver on your 2017 Chevrolet Spark. There's a lot of benefits to adding a hitch to a Spark. Uh, for the Spark owners, you know there's not a whole lot of room on the inside. Adding a hitch is going to allow you to carry a cargo carrier or put on a bike rack. So you can move a lot of the cargo from the inside, put it on the outside to make more room on the inside for passengers. This is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. As you can see, uh, the cross tube and everything is hidden up behind the fascia. It's going to be a class one hitch, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. Hitch pin hole is going to be half inch in diameter. Does not come with a hitch pin and clip, however it can be found here at eTrailer.com. We're going to have rolled steel si style safety chain loops, gives you plenty of room for different size hooks. Again, this is a class one, so it's only going to accept class one accessories. It's also going to have a nice black powder coat. It's going to be constructed out of steel. Black powder coat is really going to help resist any rust or corrosion. Now, as far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 200 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube. So when adding that cargo carrier, you want to make sure adding any items on it, you're not exceeding that downward pressure. We're going to have a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is the trailer plus the load included. That's how much the hitch can pull. You're going to check your owner's manual of your spark, make sure the vehicle can withstand an amount of weight. You're going to go with the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now I'm going to give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on bike racks and cargo carriers. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our bumper is going to be about three inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories that may fold up against your vehicle. You want to make sure that they're not going to hit your bumper fascia. From the ground to the top innermost part of your receiver tube is going to be about 11 inches. That number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories that may require a little bit more ground clearance. With the hitch only being 11 inches off the ground, I will recommend getting a raised shank. To start our installation, we're going to remove our taillights. We're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver. We're going to remove the two screws. We're going to pull our light rearward. And then we're going to remove the bulbs. Just going to twist and pull out. Take note of the color wires and the positions that they're in. And we're going to do the same thing with the other tail light. We're going to take a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to have a Phillips head screw here. And we're going to have one on this side. We're going to remove both of those. Seven millimeter socket. We're going to remove the one screw here on both sides of the vehicle. And we're going to have two push pin fasteners, one here, one here on the bottom of our fascia. Take a flathead screwdriver or trim panel tool. We're going to pry the center down like that and then pull out the base. Each one of these should have a little slot to get the screwdriver into. We'll take a seven millimeter socket. We're going to have bolt here, bolt here, bolt here, and one on bottom. Directions say five. If your vehicle has five, you're going to remove all five. This one has four. Uh, this is for the splash guard. We're going to remove those on both sides of the vehicle. And we'll set those aside and be reinstalled later on. Then we're going to start on one side, all the way down where our fender meets our wheel well, or I'm sorry, our fascia meets our fender. And we're going to slowly pull out, work our way to the center. And then we're going to set our fascia aside to be reinstalled later. Next, we're going to take a 13 millimeter socket. We're going to remove our bumper beam. We're going to have a nut here, a nut here, and a nut on the bottom. We're going to have three of them on each side. It's like we have a little bit of sealer right around the top here. We're going to have to cut that loose. Let's take a knife. Cross it like that. Anything over here. We're gonna set it down for a second. We're gonna place on our hitch like that. We're gonna reinstall our bumper beam and reinstall the hardware we just removed. 
Then you're gonna to torque the hardware, the specification, and the instructions. Next, we're gonna to have to trim the bottom part of our fascia. When you find your center, mark it. We're gonna go an inch and five eighths one way, inch and five eighths the other, to give you a total of three and a quarter. And then you're gonna go up two and a quarter. Now we're gonna cut out this inside square here. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool or a rotary tool with a plastic cutting blade. If you don't have one, um, you can use a utility knife to cut this. Just be careful when you're doing it. Pull off the piece. We'll take the utility knife or our knife. Go ahead and peel this off. We're going to take it and run it right along the edge. Cut off the burrs just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Now we'll set our fascia in place. Give it a little test fit look to see if we have to make any adjustments. If not, we can go ahead and reinstall our fascia in reverse order from the way we took it off. Again, I'm Shane with eCharter.com. I hope this video has helped you, whether you're still deciding or installing the Draw Tight Sport Frame Class 1 Trailer Hitch Receiver on your 2017 Chevrolet Spark.